The future's not set. There's no fate but what we make for ourselves. That is a quotation from John Connor from Terminator 2. And so what we have is that a vehicle from that uh, movie, the 1979 Ford LTD Country Squire. This is a great movie. Oh, it even tells you a little bit what, about what the movie is in case you've been living under a rock. But I saw this actually in the movie theater when I was younger, and it was, it was a great movie for its day. You know, the whole uh, melting robot and whatever I think it was. All right, uh, 2021 copyright here. Oh, series 32. So the Ford Country Squire dates back to 1950, and it ran up until 1991, over eight generations. And I guess this would be the eighth generation one if it's a 1979, which uh, ran between that year to 1990. Okay, so they downsized it from the previous ones, and so it was 11 inches shorter than the previous uh, wagon, and nearly a thousand pounds lighter. So probably for fuel economy and stuff like that. It would still carry eight people around though. And then you had some engine choices of a 4.9 up to 5.8 liter V8s, uh, four-speed automatic transmission. Uh, around 30,000 of the 1979 models were made. Uh, but sadly, after this uh, run, the eighth generation, they died out because Dodge came out with the caravan and minivans were now becoming popular. So that's pretty much what killed the uh, station wagons until like they were revived decades later. The R Audi RS6 is one of my favorite modern station wagons or estate wagons or Avants as the Germans call it. Okay, that's actually a, a scene from Terminator 2. It's all dirty, I guess. I can't recall if they went to Mexico at the end of this movie. I think they did. But here's a, a distinguishing feature of these. They had this wood grain paneling, you know, fake wood grain, I believe. You can't put real wood on a, a modern car. I believe the 1940s woody wagons, though, they really were real wood panels on the side. Yeah, here's the end scene, I think. <coughs> so I think Sarah Connor's riding off into the... Oh my goodness, look at this bumper. <laughs> Okay, well, this is common. Green Knight's quality control is uh, almost not existent, it seems. Well, anyways, looking at the side of this, it does have a you know a wood grain paneling. It's just brown with black lines over it, but that's good enough. It's better than just plain brown. I really appreciate the black lines, so it looks like a, the siding of a house or something. It's not a random pattern of wood, unfortunately. Where Greenlight does do a good job is the wheels. Granted, these are some plain wheels, just steel hubcap type of things. And this time around, the white walls on the tires look good, but what's weird is the tires are mismatched. The front ones have uh, really thin side blocks here, but the rear one has like gnarly truck tire side blocks. What about this side? <laughs> oh yeah, so I have a mismatched tire. All of This side is all the truck side. And then look at this disgusting uh, oval white wall. So that's another green light problem as well. They just, they always print these white wall tires and they shouldn't even bother. Sure, it's on the real car, but if you can't do it right, don't even bother. The only good fix, oh no, it's not a fix. I was thinking about just flipping the tire around, but this side is even worse. It's like there's not enough white paint. Look at this. Like what's going on with that? Well, the only good thing is, is this is a weather-beaten car. So in fact, I'm going to put this on here and see if it's concentric. I'd rather have a beaten round. Yeah, so it looks like it was perfect before, and now it's just worn out because it's a weather-beaten car. Oh, but look at this. This is weird. <laughs> now this tire has no white wall on both sides. So, like, the consistency is really off. Well, it's... What the heck, man? Let's just see what it looks like without the white wall. See, that's fine too. It actually looks like a worn out tire. It looks a little too modern with the, uh, or too clean maybe. That's the better word for, I don't know. Anyways, 
Uh, no white walls on those side, these sides. So this only this one they printed it twice because I guess the guy at the assembly factory realized this is not good enough. Okay. Well, anyways, that's a long segue there. Um, there's some weathering here in the bottom. If I could focus there. Yeah, some brown, rusty chip kind of marks printed on. There's uh, the lock mechanism and the door handles are painted silver. There's a little bit of detail in the molding there for the finger grab. A uh, tiny reflector and then country squire, I guess, there. What is this thing called? I already forgot. It's a country squire, so that's almost legible. Or is it? Let's zoom in. Yeah, it actually is legible. And then the windows here, they're obviously dusted from dusty roads. Oh, I think I scratched it, or did I? Well, anyways, uh, silver paint, black molding paint, nice front open window. Oh, nice, there's a sky blue and purplish interior. Or is this just a light? No, it's a different color. The seat is definitely got a hint of purple, but the dashboard is sky blue. And nice enough details in there, so pretty cool. So I like models without side windows. I only wish, oh, the reason why they left this up is because of this bar. Maybe it'd be, they could have left this down though. Maybe just casted this plastic in here and then stopped it and have this open. Okay, whoa, yeah, a lot of brown weathering up here. Some ribs on the roof. More rib. The rib starts here, but I think this is raised again, or it's wider, where the silver is. And then a separate chromed uh, roof rack that's been weathered quite a bit, so that's nice. Uh, windshield. There's no indication of wiper blades. I don't know if they're... T yeah, I don't see them on the real photo either. They must be hidden under the hood. Oh, uh, yeah, so you can scratch this pretty easily. Which doesn't bother me because this is a weathered car. That's the nice thing about weathered finishes. You can, if they're messed up, who cares? It's a weathered vehicle. So yeah, the headlights are totally covered in dust. And then the, this is a smooth surface they printed on the grill. This actually seems... No, that's smooth also. Or is it? I see a texture in there. I don't know if it's a paint or... It's, I don't know. I can feel a texture. So yeah, this is smooth. That's textured and... Some black paint, some bumperettes with some black paint, more chipping or bad weathering, which is good weathering actually because it looks bad. <laughs> okay, well, unfortunately, not enough orange paint there. Okay, this printing here again seems fine. Is that on? Is this a mirrored image? No, it's not mirrored. So, this weathering is a different print. So cool because, yeah, I guess they had to do it anyways with the Country Squire. This reflector looks good, fuel filler door looks all right. Yeah, this all looks fine. Okay, cool. And then nice, there's no uh, rear glass, so you can see right into this, but... Hmm, well, it seems like Arnold has uh, terminated this rear hatch from opening. Anyways, uh, so what happened with the bumper is that the plastic pin sheared off. It's totally gone. A little glue, simple fix, I guess. All right, but I, I'm trying to figure this out. Well, there is a license plate. I'm assuming that's accurate to the real movie. And then Ford. Now, this is a nice wood grain pattern out here. There's a wood grain on this lighter color. It's a really nice printing here. Oh, I didn't even see it. Yeah, so it is on the side as well. I was just focused on the brown. But this tan wood grain is nice. Okay, very good, green light. Tail lights look pretty good as well. You got some red, but tiny little silver trim work going around it. The backup lights are white. Raised uh, door, uh, well, door handle and the uh, lock. This is raised as well. The light thing here. Uh, yeah. Well, does this open? Hmm. I see like a tab in there. No. Seems weird. I mean, why would you go through the trouble of engineering a door and if it, it doesn't work? It would just be better if they didn't bother, right? Just have this all casted in with the rest of the body so you don't see this really bad panel gap. Just an open window, I think, is good enough. All right, well, that's a mess. Uh, I'll have to deal with that. So, green light, press fit together bases, but what's nice is they tell you what the car is usually. 
but this font is so small. It's smaller than the inside of a toothpick. I mean, I took the rubber off of this toothpick. But it does say 79 Ford under magnification. Tire treads seem all right. I just don't like the side blocks again. Copyright 2018 of the original casting. Okay, let's look at a couple other wagons. Also from Greenlight, we have this old 442 liveried uh, wagon. Boy, I don't even know what it is. I don't think I even showed the bottom in my review of this. It's called an Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser. And then I have this older Auto World here. It's the Kingswood Estate Wagon. I, I love this one because the front end is just mean looking. Unfortunately, the wood grain is non-existent. It's just a wood color. You know, it's just brown. So not the best effort there. But the same mold, but now put out by Johnny Lightning on this Zingers, they they put the, you know, this driftwood pattern. Granted, it's not printed very well on this side. On this side of the car, it, it looks better. So I like that one. And then uh, this Auto World, this is, what, a Buick? 74 Buick Estate Wagon and uh, decent white wall tires I guess and the tread blocks on the side are much finer which is the way it should be on a street street tire big big wagon this guy in fact I like to compare the length of wagons let's see line the front ends yeah, that Buick is still number one on the length factor there. But as, as we know, its size doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that's what guys like to think. I don't know, you female viewers, the few that are watching this channel, you can leave your own comments. All right, uh, I guess, yeah, I like these wagons, you know, they're funky. Let's uh, take uh, these guys out. The Dirt Road to Mexico coaster. <clears throat> okay, so the bumper. Standard, almost standard QC problem from Greenlight. That was probably shipping damage, possibly. But I can get over that. That's not an issue. The, the worst part about this is this rear tailgate. It's, <laughs> it's, look at it. It's, it looks like it's been a car accident. It's a wreck. There's no reason, there's no need to have an opening tailgate, I don't think. It's perfectly fine not having opening tailgates. This this auto world doesn't, and it looks better for it. Look at the panel gap. It's nice, it's even, it's consistent. Nice, even, consistent, right? Now, the screen light does have an opening tailgate. Luckily, it's a darker color, and it actually isn't a disaster. But I think just the open window is good enough. All right. No, well, anyways. So be mindful of that if you guys decide to pick up one of these castings, whether it's this livery or not. Uh, it just might be a, it might be a poorly designed tailgate. You know, the paint finish has no relevance. But I do like the Terminator 2 movie, so I do like station wagons. So I'm pretty, I'm still pretty happy I got this guy. And for me, I like the fact that it is a weathered finish because if any sort of QC problems, it, it's a messed up car in the first place. So it works out for me. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys uh, checking in today. So I guess I'll see you the next time I get out of the station wagon. All right. Bye now.